With new releases ranging from gleeful throwbacks to the golden age of science fiction to dark dystopian modern day thrillers, it's a great time to be a sci fi fan. But which films should you be watching? Here are the best sci fi movies of 2020 so far. Extraterrestrial period piece The Vasts of Night was made of a fraction of the budget allocated to some of 2020's best science fiction movies, but you wouldn't necessarily know it by watching it. The film follows switchboard operator Faye and radio DJ Everett, two young adults in the 1950s who set out to investigate the source of a strange frequency they're both picking up during a quiet night at work in a small town. Writer-director Andrew Patterson pulled out every trick in the indie film book to bring his feature film debut to life, creating some beautiful and highly buzzed about tracking shots with nothing more than a digital camera gimbal and a go-kart. The whole film was shot in the small New Mexico town of Whitney, where the locals were more than willing to help. In fact, Patterson borrowed the aforementioned go-kart from a local teen. The Vast of Night made its festival debut in 2019 and was quickly snapped up by Amazon, who released it on Prime in May 2020. In an interview with the Movable Fest, Patterson spoke of his first film and said, This is something I'm very proud of. Everyone that worked on this movie since it debuted a year ago has been passionate about it and have found creative ways to make it relevant. So this movie has done everything I could have imagined. Now, I really hope it can become the kind of thing that people watch for several decades. The film has been reviewed enthusiastically with critics calling it a smart, restrained, and well-made take on the classic alien invasion story, easily reaching certified fresh status on Rotten Tomatoes. If you're in the mood for a short and sweet movie that draws you in with its atmosphere and craftsmanship, instead of just trying to dazzle you with special effects, The Vast of Night is definitely worth your time. Parasite star Choi Wushik plays one of four desperate young men that pull up a daring heist in a South Korean sci-fi action thriller, Time to Hunt. The film premiered at the Berlin International Film Festival in February 2020, becoming the first Korean picture to be shown in the festival's special gala section. The premiere was followed up with a wide release on Netflix a few months later. Set in a future version of South Korea crippled by a financial crash, Director Yoon Sung Hyun's dystopian thriller follows the four protagonists as they try to disappear after sticking up the patrons of an illegal gambling den. Things rapidly descend into violence when a merciless assassin comes after the boys, hell-bent on retrieving the cash and CCTV hard drives they stole. Speaking to the Korea Times, Yoon revealed that the film's grim setting was actually inspired by a trip to the Americas, saying, I remember being shocked by the hyperinflation in South America by buying a soft drink at a store. I got a glimpse of slums in the US, which allowed me to portray streets full of graffiti in the film. Despite all those real-life influences, the final product is distinctly South Korean. However, Time to Hunt is sleek and well shot from start to finish, and the stylized action never lets up, something the Hollywood trades appreciated. Variety said in its review of the film, once the protagonist's plan goes into action, it hardly ever decelerates. And the Hollywood Reporter called Time to Hunt a tour de force exercise in non-stop tension. Irish director Lorgan Finnegan's sophomore feature film Vavarium plays on what research suggests is a very real fear for millennial couples, settling down and having kids. When Tom and his girlfriend Gemma decide to buy their first home, they visit a real estate agent who tells them about Yonder, a new suburban development. The couple decides that living among rows of identical houses isn't for them long before the creepy agent vanishes, and when they try to leave, they discover that every road leads back to the house he showed them. Number nine again. Did we just do some kind of loop? Things go from weird to weirder when a mysterious baby turns up on their doorstep, along with a note that says the couple won't be released from the bizarre home until they've raised the child. Jesse Eisenberg and Imogen Poots were both roundly praised for their performances in the film, which debuted at Cannes and was released in March 2020. At the time, vast swaths of people were isolating in their homes due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and Finnegan has admitted that there are definitely some, quote, weird parallels with his movie. He told Vulture, Sometimes I think films are a bit like, they pop at us as if there's a network between all of humanity, like there's a subconscious thread that's connecting everything, and films are just a manifestation of these sorts of anxieties that everybody has. The critics couldn't help but take the timing of the release into account in their reviews, with vague visages calling Vavarium, quote, the ideal isolation horror. 
a 2020 sci-fi film that took on new meaning during the pandemic, Nisa Hardiman's critically acclaimed feature-length debut Sea Fever follows a marine biology student who buys her way onto a fishing trawler so she can conduct research into faunal behavioral patterns. Hermione Caulfield's Savan doesn't fit in with the vessel's hardy crew, led by Du Grey Scott's Captain Jared, but they turn to the knowledgeable redhead when mysterious holes appear in the boat's hull. As she's the only one with diving gear, Savan goes below to check the course and discovers a gigantic organism with tendril-like appendages, though it's the parasites the squid-like creature releases into the water supply that pose a real threat. Straight through the steel. Sea Fever is, essentially, alien on the open water. Hardyman pays homage to the film's director, Ridley Scott, with some squirm-inducing body horror, and she creates the same kind of claustrophobic tension that made Alien so enthralling. If you've got a thing about eyeballs, maybe swerve this one. The director told Quiet Earth that their boat was positioned, quote, days away from shore during the shoot, creating a genuine sense of isolation among the cast, she explained. It's really disturbing being on the boat because it leads to a kind of collective agoraphobia. There you are on top of one of the least understood biospheres on planet Earth. We know more about the surface of the moon than we do about the deep ocean. Spanish sci-fi thriller The Platform takes place inside a so-called vertical self-management center, a tower-like structure that houses hundreds of inmates. Every day, a platform filled with enough food and drink for everyone descends from the top level, though many routinely go hungry. See, the residents are allowed to consume as much as they'd like, meaning those near the bottom get scraps if they're lucky. Debuting director Gaudet Gaztelo Uritia told The Guardian, It's an allegory about the distribution of wealth, which is a universal debate and a debate that's been going on for as long as people have been around. The point of the platform is that it isn't about a war between those above and those below. We all have someone above us and someone below us. The film follows Goring, who's duped into volunteering for a six-month stint in the tower in exchange for a diploma. Being periodically moved from level to level, he sees the conditions on the lower levels with his own eyes and decides to take matters into his own hands. When Goring is assigned to level six, he convinces his cellmate Baharad to ride the platform down with him, distributing rationed portions of food as they go. The platform's ambiguous ending didn't turn off the critics, who overwhelmingly enjoyed it. The New York Times raved, a gnarly mashup of midnight movie and social commentary with genre jolts and broad messaging in equal measure. Back in 2017, The Mummy was supposed to be the first film in a new cinematic universe based on the universal classic monster films of the mid-twenties through the 1950s. But the so-called Dark Universe was called off when the Tom Cruise-led blockbuster flopped at the box office. The original plan was to have Johnny Depp star in the second Dark Universe film, though he was dropped from The Invisible Man when the studio decided to take a new approach. Not sure I deserve that. Saw's Lee Wanell was brought in to direct, and he was given the freedom to make a film that didn't have to include any links to future franchise installments. The result was a thrilling standalone sci-fi horror flick that blew the critics away. Wanell's remake stars Elizabeth Moss as Cecilia Cass, a woman who believes she's being stalked by her controlling and violent ex, despite the fact that he killed himself after she escaped from him. This is what he wants. This is what he used to do when we were together, he wants. You to think that I did it, this is what he does. Cecilia's paranoia leads her back to the huge house that she shared with loaded optics engineer Adrian Griffin, where her mounting suspicions are confirmed when she discovers one of Adrian's invisibility suits. Before Cecilia can prove her story, however, her invisible tormentor gets incredibly violent, forcing her to fight for her life. Moss delivers a typically committed performance, and she helped out of camera too. When Al told Gizmondo, Elizabeth Moss was my greatest asset and greatest ally. The amount of collaboration that we had, she really became a co-writer in a sense. Sonic the Hedgehog looks set to join the long list of terrible video game adaptations when the first trailer dropped and fans reacted to the titular character's design with a mixture of disappointment and horror. Sonic looked far too realistic, making him appear more creepy than cheeky. Twitter took aim at the VFX team's bizarre choices, with Sonic's human-like teeth being the biggest offender. But in an unexpected move that ultimately paid off, Paramount agreed to a complete redesign of the eponymous Blue Hedgehog. The end result was a charming and entertaining family film that imagines Sonic as an alien who comes to Earth to hide from those seeking to exploit his super speed. It didn't do much for the average critic, but it was a real hit among Sonic fans. Director Jeff Fowler's movie wound up with a lukewarm rating on the tomato meter, but audience reviewers enjoyed watching Sonic and James Marston Sheriff Tom Wachowski take on Jim Carrey in his element as the iconic Dr. Robotnik. One critic who did show some love for the film was The Guardian's Keith Stewart, who argued that video game movies aren't necessarily interested in critical acclaim, saying, 
They don't really function in the same way as other big commercial tie-ins. They are multi-layered in a semiotic, rather than emotional or thematic sense. They are fan service, but in a good way. Nicolas Cage got back to his gonzo best in Color Out of Space, a superbly executed, pulp-heavy sci-fi based on the H.P. Lovecraft short story The Color Out of Space. It was the author's personal favorite, and it also means a lot to director Richard Stanley, whose mother was a huge Lovecraft fan. I read it when I was 13 years old. My mum introduced me to Lovecraft, who was my mother's favorite author. So when the chance to direct a big screen adaptation came, Stanley decided to get back in the game, and his return was a critical success. Color Out of Space follows farmer Nathan Gardner and his family, who are thrown into a purple-tinged nightmare after a meteorite that's harboring an extraterrestrial organism lands on their property. A strange alien color spreads across their farmland, causing the animals to mutate and turning the plants sentient. It's a mind-bending experience that only Stanley could have pulled off, according to Cage, who told Slashfilm, of all the filmmakers I could imagine doing this and getting close to creating an alien color, it would be Richard. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies and TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.